topic, the school play. Are you planning on attending the school performance on Saturday? A play? I had no idea there'd be a play on Saturday night. Yes, I heard about it in English class the day before. I believe it'll be excellent. Who informed you about this? Miss Martin, our English teacher, told us everything. This is the first play of the year for the drama club? Yeah, I think so. What is the play about? And I hope it isn't boring. Shh, it's a secret. Oh, come on, please tell me. It's the musical, The Sound of Music. Really? Miss Martin told us so. It's fantastic. So, do you want to watch the play with me on Saturday night? Of course. I'm looking forward to the drama team's performance. I heard they practice really hard for that play. Topic, ballet class. Where are you going, Cindy? Hi, Mrs. Jenny. I'm going to ballet class this afternoon. Ballet lessons? I had no idea you were a ballet student. How long have you been a dancer? Today is my first day and I'm not looking forward to it. My parents want me to study ballet. Where are the classes? At the local community center. When I was your age, I used to study ballet. I now teach ballet at a dance studio. Oh, I didn't realize that. Where do you give your lectures? Easy Steps Dance Academy. It's just down the street. Ballet is a beautiful dance that is easy to learn. I don't think it's simple. I found it very difficult. Of course, you'll need to master the steps and practice a lot. But I think you'll love it. I certainly hope so. Well, go have fun. Topic, Monet's Garden. This picture is so beautiful. Do you know who the author is? Claude Monet was a fantastic painter. He was one of the first Impressionists. Oh, I've heard that name before. Can you explain to me what Impressionism is? The thing is, Impressionist artists were not trying to paint a reflection of real life, but an impression of the person, light, atmosphere, object, or landscape. Who were the Impressionists? Some of the main Impressionist artists are Claude Monet, Berthe Morissette, Camille Pissarro. How did they paint? Before Impressionism, landscape and art were often imaginary. Perfect landscapes painted in the studio. The Impressionists changed all that. They painted outdoors. Was this painting done outdoors by Monet as well? That's great. Yeah, Monet spent a lot of time painting outside. He wanted to demonstrate how objects seemed in the light. Does he draw a lot of pictures related to the garden? Right. Garden scenes appear in several of his works. He enjoyed painting flowers and trees. He enjoyed painting in his own yard. Does his garden still exist? Yes, this garden now attracts a large number of tourists each year. The majority of them are art enthusiasts or artists. Topic, nature and the environment. <laughs> 
this is a good location. Let's take a break and enjoy a picnic close to the river. Nice weather. I usually get hungry when I go for a walk. I'm all set for lunch. We can sit on the grass here. Oh my goodness! Someone forgot to dispose of these empty paper bags. There's rubbish all over the place. Why don't people throw garbage in the right place? I don't know. These people have very poor consciousness. It greatly affects the environment and surrounding landscape. There are also several empty cans and glass bottles under the tree. People should pick up after themselves and not leave rubbish behind. That's correct. So, after our lunch, let's clean up as much garbage as we can and get it out of here. Okay, next week we can go with some people. We'll clean up their trash in this park. Excellent thought. Topic, let's recycle. Hello, Jane. Have you heard about the new legislation aimed at encouraging people to recycle? They were mentioning it in the news yesterday night. I'm not sure I like them. Instead of tossing away paper, metal, and glass, the government aims to keep the environment clean by recycling them. But who wants to spend an extra 50 cents for a cup of coffee? 50 cents? A paper cup only costs five cents more. A rather expensive price. But you can also receive your money back if you return the cup. I think this policy has been approved by the government. Come to think of it, this is very good for the environment. Yeah, from now on, I'll return all of the paper coffee cups I use. Good, we must all recycle. It has to keep the environment clean. Topic, growing roses. Please excuse me, ma'am. My rose shrub is giving me trouble. What is the problem? It used to yield an abundance of pink roses. I don't quite understand what you mean. Please, tell me the details. Yeah, now it is no longer producing any blooms. I get what you mean. That appears to be an issue. Do the plant's leaves appear to be in good condition? No, not at all. The leaves were formerly extremely green. The majority of them have now gone brown. So, I believe your rose bush needs fertilizer. Okay, what type of fertilizer do you recommend I use? This liquid fertilizer is excellent. It will aid in the re-greening of your rose leaves. And will it flower again? Yes, the plant should then begin to produce roses very shortly. How much? The fertilizer is around $10. How long will my rose bush need to recover? I believe it'll take about two weeks. Great, thank you very much. Topic, bird watching. Tomorrow I want to go bird watching. Do you know of a nice bird watching location? There's a beautiful park nearby. There are usually a lot of lovely birds there. Will I be able to view a variety of birds in that park? Yes, I believe so. Even if the birds are far away, you may see them using binoculars. 
Great, I have a book with pictures of all the different kinds of birds. It appears that you enjoy bird watching. Sure, do you want to accompany me tomorrow? Thank you, but no, I find bird watching to be tedious. That is not correct. Birds are fascinating creatures. Some birds have brightly colored feathers. Some birds build unique nests in which to lay their eggs. You're very knowledgeable about birds. Right? I love studying birds. Okay, maybe I'll go with you. Topic, trees in the forest. Where did you go yesterday? I looked for you. I went to the tree fair to buy some saplings. Who's organized this tree fair? The Department of Agriculture and Forestry organizes this tree fair on the occasion of Tree Plantation Week. Why do they organize this tree fair? It appears strange to me that you're not yet fully aware of the importance of tree plantation. Right you are. Please tell me about the importance of tree plantation. I want to know about it in detail. Trees are our best friends. They are a great source of our food, vitamins, and furniture. What will happen if trees continue to be cut at the present rate? The lives of all living beings will be endangered. I see. Forests are the source of life. They give man oxygen, rain, wood, fruit. But do you notice that many unscrupulous people are cutting down trees at random? What might be its consequence? If they cut down trees indiscriminately, the country will one day turn into a desert. The temperature will rise and it will cause the greenhouse effect. Now I understand why tree plantation is so important. Will you be visiting New York this weekend? Yeah! I will be going to New York this Saturday morning. That's great. Unfortunately, I can't go with you. What? Will you be busy on this Saturday? Yeah. For the weekend, I'll be studying in a flower arrangement class with Maria. So what will you do there? I will be touring everything from the Empire State Building to the Statue of Liberty. Sounds fun. Will you be going alone or with somebody? Honestly, this time I will go to the city of someone special to me. He's John. We'll go on a date there. Great! You will be having a very romantic and happy moment together this weekend. I hope so. He's so nice and funny. And I didn't know about John. When did your relationship with him become serious? We haven't officially fallen in love yet. But our relationship is slowly getting closer, and I'm happy about that. Yes, this trip will definitely strengthen your relationship. I hope so, Susan. I bet you will be falling in love in no time. Maybe this time, in a few months, we will be raising a glass to bless the bride and groom. No, no. Don't get carried away. I'm not even thinking about getting married yet. I don't know if John is the one for me yet. We might not turn out to be a good match. One thing is sure, though. 
I will be trying to have a good time no matter what happens. I wish I could go with you there. New York is my favorite city, but I will be sitting here instead. I'm sorry, but there will be many other opportunities for you to go. When I get there, I will definitely take a lot of photos and videos to send you. You will go to many different places and you will forget about me. No, Susan. I promise to send you lots of great photos just like you are experiencing it there. Someday soon, we will go together. But I don't like to fly. I don't know when I will be able to go there. Don't worry, I'm not flying there. I will be taking a train from Chicago instead. Really? If I could go this time, this trip would be perfect for me. How many days will you be there? About one week. After a moment of thought, Susan sends her phone to text Maria that she wouldn't be able to join the flower arrangement class with her. She checks the train to book tickets. What are you doing, Susan? What time will your train depart? 6.15 a.m. So, have you booked your hotel yet? What hotel will you stay in? I will stay at the Roosevelt Hotel. Why do you ask? Wow, it's pretty expensive, but it's okay. Maybe I'll go with you there. Oh, really? Susan, I will be spending most of my time with John, so you might feel out of place. Plus, John and I want to spend private time together, so... No, no, Linda. <laughs> Just joking. I will be going with Maria that day. You'll feel inconvenient if I go with you, won't you? No, Susan. I just want to have other times just me and you to go together. And I will spend all the time with you. I understand what you mean, Linda. Surprise! Why are you here? I will go with you to New York. What about Maria? What about the flower arrangement class? It's okay. I have settled it all right. Morning, honey. Have you been on the train yet? What happened, Linda? Um, the plan will change a little. My friend Susan also is going to New York with me. Hi, John! I'm Susan, a friend of Linda. We're at the train station and getting ready to go to New York. I'm so excited. Yeah! Hi, Susan. I'm John. Nice to meet you. Hi! After a long journey, you must be very tired. First, I will take you to the hotel to rest. I booked a room at the same hotel as you, Linda. Shall we go there together? Yes, of course. Why is she here too? She didn't tell me. She said she couldn't come with me. She showed up at the last minute. But don't worry, 
she won't bother us. What are your plans for today? We will be having lunch at 11 a.m. We will be visiting the park at 1 p.m. Then we will be walking along the riverbank. Wow! Coincidentally, my plan is the same. Let's go together, okay? Really? Okay, Susan. But I haven't had any plans for tonight yet. You can go see the Broadway show, Susan. At 7 p.m. tonight, it will be beginning. Oh, yes! That's a good idea. Hello? Where are you? The show is so boring. I don't want to see it anymore. We are having dinner. Around 9.30 p.m., we will be relaxing on the ferry ride to the Hudson River from Manhattan to Freedom Island. Can you wait for me to come to join the ferry ride? Oh, yes. Susan, so let's meet there at 9.15 p.m. Please don't tell me that Susan will keep going with us. Yes, she will. I think this is yours. Oh! Thank you. Thank you so much. Are you okay? Yes, I am. Do you live here or are you a tourist? I am a tourist. Thanks so much for helping me. I'm Susan. Don't mention it. I'm Matt. Can I invite you to have a coffee to thank you for your help? You don't need to thank me, but I won't refuse a cup of coffee from you. Meeting new people. Hello. Hi. It's so nice to meet you. Lovely to finally meet you. How are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you finding London? So far, it has been incredible. Like I've been, you know, working really hard, but also having lots of fun as well. It's just the weather that's not quite my cup of tea. It's not great. It's a bit gray at the moment. It's a little bit gray and a little bit drizzly and a little bit cold for me. I've spent a few days up in Scotland as well, which was even colder. So I guess now... What's it like in Australia? At the moment, we're just going into summer, so it's starting to get warm. I'm envious. I'm looking forward to getting back there, actually. Do you live near the beach? I do, yeah. I live in Melbourne, right near the beach. Yeah. And how long are you going to stay here for? Probably just another few days, actually. So I've been here for about two weeks already. Do you miss home? Not really. 
It's nice to get out and explore and see new things and meet lots of new people. Like yourself. So, yeah. Yeah, I love traveling. Do you? So where have you been traveling recently? Well, I used to live in Spain. I got to see quite a lot of Spain. I haven't been traveling recently. I did go on holiday to Spain this summer, but I'm looking to move abroad very soon. Really? I'm looking to go back to Spain very, very soon. I would love to visit Spain. I've never been. Haven't you? Have you been to many other countries? I have been. Yeah, I've traveled quite a lot. I've been to Greece, so you know, warm, beautiful beaches, lovely in summer, that kind of thing. I went to Greece this summer. I went to Kefalonia, one of the islands. It is such a gorgeous part of the world. The food and food. It's like a mix of Greek and Italian food together. Just my two favorites. The European summer is lovely. It's a shame about the winter. I know! I'll make sure that I'm back here for the summer next time. And you need to visit Spain. Yes. Spain is my favorite country in the world. Yes, I know. It's been on my list for many years. And the food there? If you like Greek food, then you're going to love Spanish food. I'm a bit tired of eating Spanish food in restaurants anywhere else in the world, except in Spain. It's just not the same. It's not the same. And I'm looking forward to having my first proper siesta as well. Have you never had one before? We need to correct that. Not officially, no. So I've seen on your channel that you quite like cooking. Yes. How did you get into that? Well, to be honest, I learned a lot from my fiancé, Shah. So, he is an excellent cook, and I guess when you get in a relationship with someone, you have to kind of up the ante a bit, so he was a really good cook, and I needed to impress him with my skills. Well, cooking, for one, just isn't the same, is it? Actually, I'm awful at cooking, for one. I always make about six meals worth, and then I have to end up freezing it. Which is kind of helpful, but I'm not good at cooking. Well, I recently moved back with my parents for a short while. Before moving on to another country, and the best part of it is being able to cook for three other people. I thought you were going to say that the best part about it is you get home-cooked meals every night. No, I cook myself. You do it yourself? Yeah, that's like my sort of agreement. You can have me here and I'll cook for you. What's your specialty? Well, I did travel to Italy a little bit. Actually, I didn't go to Italy. I went to Palermo in Sicily. And they taught me how to make a mean risotto. But I like experimenting, so I kind of ask my dad and brother, because they're the most appreciative, what do you fancy? And then I try and do it, but with a twist. So if they want Mexican, then I'll do some sort of... I like to invent. We are quite opposite in that sense. I'm very much like a find a really good recipe and make the recipe. See, I like to find a couple of recipes, take inspiration from them, and then rewrite it myself. That sounds interesting and very exciting. So, what's your number one recipe then? I love cooking Thai food, actually. 
Oh, I do love Thai green curry. Yeah. But I find it hard to find a good paste. Well, I make all my pastes myself, so that's why mine is so good. But, yeah, it's all about the paste, right? So you cook that first, then you deal with the rest of it. So you must have lived in quite a few countries then? I have. I've definitely tra visited a few. I've only lived in... I was born in Australia, and I've lived most of my life in Australia. But I have spent some time living in Vietnam, and also in Malaysia. I've never been to Asia at all. Haven't you? In fact, I've only ever left Europe twice. Once it was to go to Jamaica, and once it was to go to Grenada. Oh, really? You're a Caribbean kind of guy. I've lived in just in Spain. I've lived in Madrid, and I lived in Seville. The beautiful part of the world. And London and the countryside in England. I'm from Bedfordshire. What's the countryside like? So green that sometimes when I get off the train, I have to put my sunglasses on because it hurts my eyes. It's beautiful. Lovely in spring and summer. Autumn is stunning because you get all of the fall of the leaves. Yeah. And winter's nice. It does snow, occasionally. Where I'm from, it's quite flat, but if you go further... Further afield, you can go down hills and everything. Yeah. But I'm looking to live in some other countries soon. Not sure. That's one of the things that I love most about teaching and meeting new people, is there are so many opportunities to, you know, travel and go to different places and places that you never really expected to go to either. You mean... It's a journey, isn't it? You just end up doing things that you never, ever imagined and meeting lots of random people. Like me! Exactly! Running to you in London. Okay, Emma. Well, I would love to show you my neighborhood, so why don't we go grab a coffee? Yeah! I'd love to have a little bit of a walk around. That sounds great. Let's do it. And have a chat. Continue chatting. Okay. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, comment on my video. Please, subscribe to Learn English with Jessica channel to watch more helpful videos. Goodbye.